Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about Jenkins, and I wanted to talk to you about AWS, and specifically how to run Jenkins on AWS. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you how to install Jenkins on an AWS instance, Ubuntu 20 specifically. But I should state that I've got another tutorial that shows you how to run a Bitnami stack that's got Jenkins installed on it on AWS. And I got to tell you, that is a lot simpler. So check that tutorial out as well. The first step to installing Jenkins on AWS is obviously to log into AWS and create a new AWS instance. I'm gonna launch a new instance. You gotta figure out what distribution you would like to install Jenkins on. I'm gonna look for an Ubuntu 20. That's the latest long-term support release for Ubuntu and select that. It'll just take a moment for it to create a new instance on the free tier, which is what I want. I'll click review and launch, accept all of the defaults. And now I've got my basic AWS instance created upon which I will install Jenkins. Now, I should probably create a, a new pair here. So I'll call this my Jenkins AWS key pair. Download that key pair. Take a look at where that is. Copy it out of there. Put it somewhere safe that I can find it in the future. Looks like I already got one in there. There's my second one. What do you call it? What do you say about a man with more than one watch? He never knows what time it is there. Delete the old one, save the new one. Okay, I've got my pair. Now it's time to go ahead and launch the instance. We'll give it a sec to launch. I'm gonna click on this view instances button. Come over here, click on the instance ID. You can see it's still warming up there. So we'll give it a second just to get going completely. Okay, the instance is now running. I'm gonna to connect to this instance and run a couple of commands on here. Now, the standard command you always wanna run first is just a sudo apt get update. That just makes sure that everything is up to date. And then in order to have Jenkins run, well, I guess the one prerequisite that we have other than actually having an operating system to run it on is to have a JDK installed. The minimum requirement is JDK 8. I recommend JDK 11. Although I've actually had a couple of problems with JDK 11 and Jenkins as of late. So forgive me if in this example, I just install open JDK 8 as the base runtime for my Jenkins installation. And so this goes ahead and installs open JDK 8. Okay, and with JDK 8 configured, we can start on with some of the magic that's required in order to get Jenkins installed. The first thing we need to do is uh, let Ubuntu know about the Jenkins magic key. So we will add that in. Then we also have to update Ubuntu with a, a list of all the different devs that are required in order to get Jenkins installed. So we do this little echo deb command. That only takes a second. And then we tell Jenkins, hey, why don't you go and update yourself? Given all that new information, then Jenkins, as you can see, will go and download all of those deb binaries to make it possible for us to go ahead and actually do the install. So now we say sudo app get install Jenkins. And now given all of those debs that have been referenced and the magic key that is provided, Jenkins will now install itself and it will configure itself to start at start up as the instance starts, uh, start at uh, runtime. And uh, so Jenkins will be started and running as soon as this installation completes. It'll be running on port 8080. We will have to configure a security group to make sure that port 8080 is available. Okay, and it looks like Jenkins is now installed. With Jenkins installed, the last thing I'd like to install is, is uh, git. I like to do a sudo apt install git. To be honest with you, Jenkins really isn't too useful if you don't have git installed. So, okay, that looks good. I, I want to see if it's running. So I'm going to do a system control status Jenkins. See what happens there. You got to spell it properly, but it uh, looks like it's in an active state. Looks like it's running. Looks like it's been configured to 
have Jenkins start at boot time. So everything looks good. Now, here's the thing. You might wanna just go to your IP address and port 8080, but that's not going to work. So theoretically, that's the port 8080 address. I should be able to go over, that's the IP address of my instance. I should be able to go to port 8080, but that's not gonna work. And the reason that's not gonna work is because I've got to, I have to configure a security group for this instance that opens port 8080 up. So I come over to security for this instance. There's the security group that's been configured. And you can see I've got some inbound rules for SSH, but nothing for TCP. So what I wanna do is I wanna add a new rule and it's gonna be for custom TCP and it'll be on port 8080 on which Jenkins is running. We'll say any port can connect to that. I will save the rule and now that opens up port 8080 on my instance. I can now come over here, click enter, and you can see now Jenkins is running. And all I have to do is find that initial admin password, paste it in, and Jenkins will work. Now when Jenkins starts up for the first time, it wants to verify that the person who's brought Jenkins up in the browser has access to the physical machine on which Jenkins has been installed. I guess physical machine isn't quite the right term seeing that we're working with Amazon AWS, but you know what I mean. It's placed a secret key on the hard drive in this folder, and you've got to provide that key to prove that you have access to the machine on which it's installed. So you just do a little sudo nano and then paste the path to that initial admin password and you'll end up getting a large hexadecimal number. You wanna copy that. Make sure you don't copy any extra spaces there. You then paste that in and you click continue. Don't have to save that password. Jenkins will ask you which plugins to install. I would say accept the defaults that'll give you things like the Ant plugin, Gradle plugin, the Pipeline plugin, also give you a little bit of GitHub support, certainly some Git support, and then you're ready to actually start using Jenkins at a, a fairly competent level. And now it asks for a Jenkins admin user. I always like to create a new admin user called Jenkins with a password Jenkins. Now this is just for training purposes, obviously if in a production environment, you don't want Jenkins, 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 but it's just easy to use. Click save and continue. And you will get the IP address and port of your instance. Click save and finish. And there you go. You're ready to start using Jenkins. Jenkins is now installed on AWS. Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter and I wanted to talk to you about Jenkins and I wanted to talk to you about AWS and specifically how to run Jenkins on AWS. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you how to install Jenkins on an AWS instance, Ubuntu 20 specifically. But I should state that I've got another tutorial that shows you how to run a Bitnami stack that's got Jenkins installed on it on AWS. And I got to tell you, that is a lot simpler. So check that tutorial out as well.